Hello everyone, this is our Dental Talk Without Secrets and today we're going to be talking about diastema closure again. But today we're going to use a different technique. We're going to be using the BioClear matrices. BioClear is an American company that makes some different types of matrices for anterior and posterior teeth. Some of their anterior matrices are specifically to be used for diastema closure, which are the original BioClear matrices, okay? They have some of those which are specifically for diastema closure, but these types of matrices, we don't have them available here in Brazil. Here in Brazil, we don't have the original BioClear matrices. We don't have what they call the 360 veneer matrix, which is a matrix that if you use two of them, one at in the mesial uh, surface, other in the distal surface of the tooth, you can create a whole, uh, I want to say a veneer, almost a whole crown around that tooth, okay? We don't have that in Brazil either. The only one we have in Brazil are the black triangle matrices. I understand that some countries, especially in Asia, they also have only the black triangle matrices. And even though these black triangle, which we call BT matrices, are used specifically for closing black spaces, black triangles, it means uh, when the papilla doesn't fill in completely the gingival embrasure. I have a video here uh, that it's, it's here in my YouTube channel where I talk on how to use properly the BT matrices. If you want to take a look, it's here. You just uh, browse a little bit and you'll find that video with all the details about that. But we're going to be using this type of matrix, the black triangle matrices, to close a small diastema, okay? So, these are the, the original BioClear that were made specifically for diastema closure, but we don't have them. The ones we have available here are the BT matrices, these one here. And this is the case we're going to be discussing. It's a small diastema. It's not too small, but it's not large enough so that I could use the technique that I, that I discussed here on my last video. On my last video, I taught how to do a diastema closure where you do a wax up, you do a palatal matrix, with a silicone, uh, with a silicone matrix, and over that you use a mylar stripe. But here the space is too small; it's hard to do that. So here a, a proper matrix would be essential for us to achieve a proper result. Okay, a good result. So here you can see that the patient has just finished his orthodontic treatment. You still have some of the composite from the braces on the tooth. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do here is to remove that composite and also to clean the tooth, specifically in the interproximal area. Okay, I use uh, the 12 blade to do that. Uh, I think that's very important to be very clean in that area. Now I'm using the enhanced uh, rubber to remove all the composite from the surface of the tooth. I'm also using a soft flex disc to remove eventually the, uh, the aprismatic enamel that, because this is a young patient, so on the surface of that proximal area, the enamel might have the last layer as a aprismatic enamel, and this aprismatic enamel layer is not very good for bonding but it's just a few microns. So if you just, uh, if you just uh, uh, use a sandblast, for example, okay, with aluminum oxide, or you can use, as I did here, uh, a soft flex disc, you already remove those, those little, uh, those very small uh, portion of eventually, or, or of an eventual aprismatic enamel layer okay so these are the two matrices i'm going to use the yellow ones for the upper uh, arch okay you're going to see that if you just place those two matrices over there they're going to fall over the the, the both teeth okay they're not going to be placed straight upright okay they will fall onto the tooth so th that makes it a little hard to to do the procedure so there is a little trick 
when we are going to use those matrices. Another thing I want to highlight here is to use a rubber dam, okay? The use of a rubber dam, especially when you're, when you're restoring an area subjectively, it's essential for you to achieve a good bonding, okay? Because we're going to be bonding the composite beneath the gingival line. So the chance that we have for that gum, that gingiva, to bleed or even to have some fluids coming out of the sulcus, that is, it has a big possibility of that happening. If it, and it, if it happens, it will compromise your bonding strategy. Okay, so you put the rubber dam, you don't have to do a, 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 a knot or anything, you don't have to use a dental floss around the tooth, don't do that. You just place the matrix, the matrix itself will, will dislodge a little bit the, the rubber dam and the gingiva, creating enough space for you to do your proper restoration. Okay, very easy. So let's go. We're going to do first the right one and then the, the left one. Of course, we're going to be acid etching uh, inside the matrix, especially in that area below the gingiva, okay? So I want to place the matrix and I'm going to, to do, to, to inject my uh, phosphoric acid inside the matrix, making sure I'm reaching all that area below the gingiva, okay? I'm doing that. Then I'm going to wash thoroughly. I'm going to dry it. Okay, I'm going to put some uh, adhesive. You're going to see that sometimes micro brush is not adequate to do that. It's better for you to use a sable brush because a sable brush has a fine point, a fine sable brush, and then you can reach those areas uh, very uh, below the gingival line. Okay, right there, right there. Okay, so you can't do that with a regular micro brush. Okay, you see that I, uh, I usually I have the other uh, matrix on the other tooth, even though I'm not going to restore it right now. I'm going to restore just the right incisor, but I want to leave that matrix in that place, in place. I mean, so that I can preserve the space for my future restoration on tooth number uh, nine. Okay. So, I'm going to build a little bridge between the incisal edge and the matrix in order for me to keep that matrix up uh, in, a, in an upright position, okay? I want that matrix to be in an upright position, so I'm going to build a bridge with flowable composites from the incisal towards the palatal area inside palatal area of my matrix, okay? So that's what I'm doing over there, you see? And then I'm going to polymerize it, and you're gonna see that that bridge, that composite bridge, will maintain my matrix in the proper space, in the proper position, okay? Now I'm going to do the injection molding. Once again, there is a video here, the second video from this series, Dental Talk, Dental, talk without secrets, that my second video is about uh, injection molding. So if you have any doubts about that, take a look at that video. Just browse here and you will find it. So I'm going to inject a heated flowable composite and on top of that I'm going to inject the Filtech Universal, uh, the heated Filtech Universal, okay? So first I put a heated flowable composite and on top of that, without polymerizing it, I will use a warmed Filtech Universal, okay? You can use any uh, composite warmer, any, any device, okay? And if you don't have one, you can use Filtech Universal without warming it because Filtech Universal has a very creamy consistency. So it's good to do that. If you want to use the Z, uh, uh, in Brazil, we call it Z350, but in the United States, is the Filtex Supreme. If you want to use Filtex Supreme, Filtex Supreme must be heated because it's very hard material, okay? 
If you don't heat it, you won't be able to use it. But the FilTech Universal has a more a creamy consistency, so you can use it without heating. Okay, but if you heat it, it will be easier for you to inject inside the matrix. Okay, so that's what I'm doing. I'm going to remove the excess. You see, polymerizing it. Then I'm going to remove the matrices. I'm going to remove all the excesses. I'm going to use a fine diamond burr, as you can see that, on the buckle, on the lingual, and then some uh, soft flex discs to remove all the excess. This is a multi-blade burr from Comet. And now, once again, the, the enhance, now I'm going to, to, I can use here, uh, I can use here some device to measure, okay, the width of my tooth to see if I have the proper width for the other tooth. If not, I can, as I did here, I can use a disc and remove a little bit of my restoration, okay? All right? So let's go. Now, to do the other tooth, it's a little bit easier because uh, as I have uh, already restored tooth number eight, when I place my matrix, it will hold the upright position probably mostly by itself. I just have, to, uh, I'll just have to add a little bit with my finger. But you see the same process, acid edge inside the matrix, wash, dry, use your adhesive, um, Scotch Bond Universal adhesive. I started with a micro brush, but then I use a sable brush. I evaporate the solvent very thoroughly, very important step. Then I'm going to inject my flowable composite, warm flowable composite, and now my uh, FilTech Universal, also a warm composite to be injected inside on top of my flowable composite. Now I'm going to be removing the excess, removing excess, polymerizing it, and then once again, I'm going to be uh, removing the excesses using my burrs and my discs. Very simple, very easy, very easy. I don't need to cover the whole surface of the tooth, okay? I'm just doing composite when, where, I'm sorry, where it's needed, okay? I'm not covering the whole surface of the tooth. There's no need to do that, okay? That's it. That's what I'm doing, okay? Removing the excesses, you see? Finishing and polishing, okay? The whole series. And then I'm going to use also the soft lex spiral, as you see there, to get a very good shine. And that's it. That's our case done. Here, you see, just one composite. Uh, um, the, the good thing about the FuelTech Universal is that it has a body shade. It's like a, a, a body shade is a composite that is not as translucent as enamel shade composites, nor uh, as opaque as dentin shade composites okay so it's somewhere in between enamel composite and dentin composite so it's a very good material to be used in just one increment one layer okay and you have a very nice result like this one here okay you see here the before and after and the best image of all the x-ray you can see exactly how the the, the composite will fit you know it's very it's a, it has a very nice a very good fit on that area subgingivally, as you can see on this x-ray, okay? This is a, another case that I did a long time ago. This case here, we have two diastemas between the centrals and the laterals, and we have a small black space between the two centrals. In this case here, we're going to do one tooth at a time, okay? Um, but here it's easy. You don't need to do that bridge with the with the flowable because when you place the matrix when you inject the 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 composite it will 
immediately uh, automatically as we're going to do the whole tooth at once automatically when we inject the composite you will the matrices will go to the upright position okay you see that it's bending onto the tooth but as i inject it i just place a little instrument on top or even my finger and then i will have the proper uh, shape for that tooth okay you see i'm doing the mesial and the distal at the same time okay with two matrices okay i'm doing my injection molding i will be holding on top of those two matrices i don't press it because if i press it i can have a, a, a ditch inside that proximal area and then after polymerizing i will remove the excesses as you can see here and then i'll go to the other central okay so the two centrals i'm going to do the mesial and the distal at the same time but then the laterals i'm going to do only the mesials okay i don't need to do the distal part of those teeth okay so this is one central the right central and once it's almost finished i'll go to the other one which is this one here you see i'll do the other one the other central and after that is done same thing injection molding removing the excess polymerizing and then finishing and polishing not polishing at this point okay i'm going to do all the restorations i'm going to leave the polishing for the end after removing the the rubber dam you see here that i used this is an old case i used the 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 dental floss around those teeth but i had to remove them when i was going to be placing the 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 matrices you don't need the dental floss okay you don't need the dental floss just the matrices okay so this is the case where we use only one composite okay field tech universal this is the before and after all right and this is the case after three years one of the first cases that i did okay i hope you enjoyed it thank you for watching see you next time